The Green Bay Packers have been one of the worst teams in the NFL this season, just three and six. And now record is not always indicative of this is how good they are or aren't, but facts are facts. This is a results based league and the Packers are not getting it done this year. They have a number of players that you'd like to get excited about on defense that have been taken very high in the draft first and second round. Lucas Van Ness, Devontae Wyatt, Quay Walker. When healthy, they have some established stars like Jair Alexander, but on offense, things get a little bit dicier. You have questions on the offensive line with who's actually locked in there for the future with the contract situation of David Bakhtiari and how healthy he's been, which is not very. You have some receivers who are solid, but do they really have that top dog? Is Christian Watson truly a wide receiver one? Will Romeo Dobbs or Jaden Reed or Dontavian Wicks emerge into that role? It's tough to say. At tight end, I love Luke Musgrave and Tucker Kraft, their potential for the future. But the real problem is going to be with, is Jordan Love your franchise quarterback? Some would instantly say no. Some would say yes, absolutely. He's shown flashes of being good and some flashes of being not so good. So we're in this rebuild. We're going to try to figure out, is Jordan Love the guy or should the Packers look in a different direction? According to Madden, we'll see what happens in real life. And this is the team we're looking at again players to get excited about, but we have to see them take a big step up. And David Bakhtiari is obviously, when healthy, one of the league's best offensive tackles and has been over the past several years. He's been an all-pro first-team caliber left tackle, but the fact of the matter with David Bakhtiari is you have not necessarily been able to rely on him from a health standpoint. He's just not 100% a lot of the time. And in fact, he's only appeared in 13 games over the past three seasons. And if you take that back even one more year to his all pro first team season in 2020, he only started 12 games that year. So that is a total of 25 over the last four. And when one of the biggest like things you look for on the offensive line is durability and making every start, as talented as he is, we're probably going to have to look somewhere else. And on defense, there are obviously the established stars, Jair Alexander, Kenny Clark, Devondre Campbell, Rashawn Gary. It seems like a stretch to maybe call Campbell a star, but again, he's been one of the league's best linebackers lately. I think he was an all-pro first team inside linebacker maybe two seasons ago. And Rashawn Gary has emerged into being one of the best pass rushers in the entire league and uh, doesn't really get enough credit for it. Also, oddly enough, has me blocked on Twitter. I don't think I've ever said a bad word about the guy. I have no idea how it happened. I'm a big fan. He's from New Jersey like I am. Got to stick together. But uh, no, apparently his publicist or manager that controls the Twitter just blocks anybody that mentions him in any regard. It is bizarre. But Rashawn Gary, if this ever gets back to you, hey, I'm a big fan. <laughs> don't hate me. Or doesn't even know who I am. Let's be real. But yeah, I don't know why I'm blocked. It's just so strange. Uh, anyway, though, he's awesome. Can definitely build around him. Preston Smith, we're probably going to look to trade. And even a guy like Devondre Campbell, who I think is awesome. He's 30. He's not going to be developing. Is it better to trade him while I can for some value back? Or hold on to him and just watch him get worse and worse and worse over the course of his contract? Don't know what to do about that. Now, Jordan Love is just 24 years old. Only normal development. But with a good season, you know, he's someone that probably gets a boost up to star dev and then you get maybe a 25 year old quarterback with a really nice dev trait potentially up to superstar after another season then you really have something so i think a lot of what we do in this rebuild is going to depend on how good jordan love is and how well he plays in this first season you know even aaron jones might be an interesting decision for us he's just at that age 28 years old we know in madden and especially even real life for running backs you just usually do not see a player maintain their ability through that age and i mean we've seen it so many times guys that seemed invincible ladanian tomlinson sean alexander maybe derrick henry now at you know 29 years old it's like how long can these guys continue to take the punishment that the running back requ uh, position requires. It's uh, it's just a really, really tough position to play. Probably a waste to do this last drill with Jair Alexander. He's already in the 90s. He's already got Superstar X Factor. Like on the off chance that you do get a dev trade upgrade, you'd at least like the opportunity for it. And with Jair, there's no chance for any dev trade upgrade. 
as he is max overall. So I'm literally just playing for one skill point to make him go from a 92 to a 93. Probably not super worth it, but I mean, we get it pretty easily. You do also get a small amount of XP, 2,500. It's like, what, maybe halfway to half of a half of a half skill point? <laughs> I meant, I didn't mean to say halfway. I tried to recover. It didn't really work. It's like maybe a fifth of the way to an upgrade. And when you're as high overall as Jair Alexander is, you had 2,500 XP. Yeah, maybe, maybe around that, a fifth or a sixth or something. But uh, we'll upgrade slot and we'll also upgrade zone. He's already so good. I don't know how we got the second skill point. Maybe just, I don't know. I actually don't have a reason for it, but we did have it. I guess he just must have been close. And then the 2,500 XP pushed him over the edge. I'm not really sure. I really don't know. But yeah, he's obviously a beast. You know, I also might just move Lucas Van Ness to defensive end. He was a hybrid inside outside type guy at Iowa, even though he wasn't actually a legit starter at Iowa. I remember when I was doing his film study, I'm like, where is he? He's their best player on defense, maybe with the exception of Cooper DeGene. And he just didn't play every snap. It was bizarre. But uh, the potential was definitely there. And he could end up being a stud. Super awesome athlete. And I'm moving him to 3-4 defensive end. He also jumps up to a 74 overall there. But keep in mind this, is that I thought Rashawn Gary would be a better fit at 3-4 defensive end. And he lost like 5 or 10 pounds. And is just one of the best true edge rushers in the NFL. Pretty incredible. But Lucas Van Ness, I think they had the exact same plan for. However, I'm not doing that. I have a need at defensive end, and Lucas Van Ness is going to fill that. Devontae Wyatt could flip over to left end, Kenny Clark to nose tackle, and boom, we've upgraded our defense without actually doing anything. Uh, I like to Daryl Slayton, big TJ Slayton guy, but we're going to move Kenny Clark back over and Devontae Wyatt to left end. Actually, I'm going to flip Van Ness and Devontae Wyatt for scheme fit purposes. Who has an expiring contract? Like, who needs to be moved right now? A.J. Dillon, Rudy Ford. There's just not really, I mean, Darnell Savage even. There's not really a ton of trade value in some of these names. Eric Stokes is in two years. Kenny Clark's in two years, as is Aaron Jones and David Bakhtiari. So we have another year to figure this out. I'm probably not going to trade those guys right now, which means they might regress. Maybe... Aaron Jones is a mid-season guy who gets moved. Bakhtiari, I should probably trade. But, I mean, Rudy Ford, I guess we can dump. I don't think we're going to be too successful at the mid-season mark. We'll see what happens, but expectations are low. For those who are asking, by the way, I am still working on my draft class, of course, because it's mad and there are a billion technical difficulties that I'm trying to figure out. But um, it will be coming in some capacity, updated and upgraded in the not so distant future but what i'll say about it is that um it's probably not going to end up being perfect but it'll at least be something and that will of course start the realistic rebuilds that's going to be a little bit closer to the end of the season uh, but uh for now still going a little bit crazy not too crazy but m for most of these regular fantasy style rebuilds i'm just going to be using auto-generated classes because I feel like it makes it a little bit more of a mystery, a little bit more fun. And then when it gets closer to draft season, you guys learn about a lot of these draft eligible players. If you're not a big college football fan like me already, um, it just, I think it makes these a little bit more interesting. Although I could understand if you're newer and you're just watching, you know, one of these, and then you're never going to watch me again. You probably do want to see Caleb Williams or Marvin Harrison Jr. as draftable players. But until we get a little bit closer to draft season, it's going to be the auto-generated guys. Interesting. Strengths of the class, corner, left tackle, and quarterback. We could really end up taking any of those positions. I am going to try and develop Jordan Love, but if there's an awesome quarterback that we really can't afford to miss out on, that probably should be the pick, right? We are 5-1 and one at the midseason mark. Number 15 offense, number 8 defense, and we are not losing, which is... Some ways good, some ways bad. The good way is we're just winning. Winning is good. Now, the not so great is this is supposed to be a rebuild. We're kind of losing good draft position right now. And I don't know if the team's good enough right now for long-term sustained success. 
But at the same time, I can't trade anybody at 5-1 and one right here. So even though Darnell Savage is an expiring contract, even though Rudy Ford is in that same boat, even though A.J. Dillon is in that same boat, I can't trade any of these guys. We're going to hold on. We're going to batten down the hatches. And we're going to try to win a Super Bowl in year one, and then in year two, year three, year four, year 35. No, it's not that long of a video. We are 7-1, and one, as are the Pittsburgh Steelers. And finally, we lose again. And it was a close game, 24-21. Are the Packers' playbooks overpowered? I always knew that their defensive playbooks were pretty good. But I'll tell you something. is This team should not be doing nearly this well. And here we are, just with one of the better records in the entire NFL. And we end up having the best record in the NFC, 12 and 5. First round bye, we got the one seed over the Cowboys, who are usually dominant in simulation. This is an incredible first season. And now, how do you trade a Jordan Love when you're finding this level of team success? And he had a great year. Now, the yards aren't insane, but 31 touchdowns to 11 picks. Aaron Jones had 19 touchdowns. Good thing we didn't trade him. Receiving, nobody over 1,000 yards, but Dobbs and Watson were both close. Jaden Reed had 10 touchdowns. We're really just a run-heavy offense right now. And our defense was great. Rashawn Gary had an incredible season. Still waiting for somebody else to really establish themselves. Jair had five picks. But, I mean, this is a great year one. Vikings in the divisional here. A division rival, they went 8-9 and still somehow snuck into the playoffs and eliminate us? 26-18, our season is over. We had the number six offense, number three defense, finished 12-5, and five, and the eight and nine Vikings who limped into the playoffs eliminate us. Division rival as well. I mean, unbelievable. Ravens beat the Eagles in the Super Bowl. Battle of the Birds. Who's a Raven and an Eagle? Jeremy Macklin, isn't he? No, no, no. Torrey Smith, even. Well, I mean, like, both of them, obviously, but those are my two choices. There's somebody on defense. Feels like somebody in the secondary. I'm not coming up with it right now. You guys let me know in the comments. I, it's just more of a feeling than somebody else. Haloti Nada is another example. There are plenty of examples, right? But, um... It just feels like a, like a corner, maybe. Okay, only 26.5 million... We still paying off Aaron Rodgers' contract? Let's pick up the fifth-year option on Eric Stokes. Probably going to let A.J. Dillon walk unless he wants to re-sign for cheap, which he doesn't really seem interested in. They got to rework, like, backup running back contracts because I, I don't know that he's going to get $5.5 million per year with just the salary cap hit. Right? And that's obviously it works differently in real life, especially with the implementation of things like void years, which are fake years to spread out the contract, essentially really a bonus. And the salary is only three and a half to four mil here. But with the bonus, I I don't want to do this. I have to re-sign Darnell Savage just because I don't know that I can replace him right now. It's a little more expensive than I would like, but it's also only a two-year deal. He's going to continue to develop a little bit. The ceiling is not high there. Rudy Ford going to have to walk, and we probably just can't do a whole lot better than John Runyon Jr. right now. So we're going to bring him back. I'd do a three-year deal. It's not terribly expensive. He's going to start. He's going to be fine, if not elite, and... uh We'll head into free agency. Apparently, some changes were made so that now you see different players in the free agency pool because contracts are being managed a bit differently. So apparently, you're going to see some better free agents here. And I guess we're kind of doing that. We're seeing Josh Allen, who I feel like most of the time doesn't sneak out into free agency. Uh, other than that, it's a lot of familiar faces. It is the free agent class. You know, there are only so many players that are actually going to be free agents who are good. Geno Stone having an incredible season in terms of forcing turnovers. Could be a nice addition to our secondary. Let's go ahead and bring in Geno Stone. I'm not going to pay him too much money. If another team wants to swoop in and steal Geno Stone, they can effectively have him. But it won't happen. Geno Stone is our big free agent signing. That's our replacement to Rudy Ford. 
But you have to remember, we're also not tied down to Darnell Savage long-term. It was only a two-year deal. So safety, really, our secondary still remains a need. Whether it's CB3 or another safety, that's definitely a position I could look to take in the draft. It's not the number one need. I'm trying to decide what our number one need even would be, right? Probably something on the offensive line. You know, we, we have Elton Jenkins, who's a beast. But Bakhtiari's contract's coming up. Zach Tom could be fine. But this definitely could be a tackle and then trade Bakhtiari. Aaron Jones goes up to superstar X-Factor. Could end up being a receiver. I'm fine with tight end. I like Musgrave. I like Kraft. And then defensively, Devondre Campbell's down to an 81. We're going to need an off-ball linebacker. Probably should move him. But I just wanted to win the Super Bowl year one. Preston Smith has to go. Rashawn Gary's up to X-Factor. Devontae Wyatt's up to star. Lucas Van Ness is revealed as a star. Team's looking nice. I like Carrington Valentine in real life, but I also recognize that it's not going to be able to do much for us in game. But he, he's a nice slot option for the Packers in the future. Ooh, Nick Henry from Stanford. He's got Bs all over the place, even an A for deep route running. Could definitely be tempted to do the Packer thing and take a receiver in the second round. But we are pretty much ready for the draft. I will say, now that we're here in the draft, there is now like almost no reason to draft a corner really, really high in Madden 24. Like there are really great players you can get, but like almost always the fourth or fifth corner down the board is just unbelievable and 6'3 or 6'4 like Nate Dillard is with elite speed. Now he ran slower at the combine then some other corners above him with great speed, according to, you know, the, the ratings on the side there. But the key info tells us that elite is better than great, obviously. And I, I think that will mean the speed rating is higher than the guys who ran faster at the combine. So that's what we're going to lean towards. So if we want to take a corner, it's probably Nate Dillard down the board. And that's the seventh corner. And even though, you know, at, at a quick glance, Joey Forney looks better and Rashad Rudd is a very interesting true round one talent. B press, B zone coverage, D man coverage, and is a true round one talent. It looks like a safety to me. We don't pick until number 27. Just how do we want to approach this ends up being the question. And Levi Reynolds looks very good as well. 6'4", about 3'10". B block shed, finesse moves, and tackle. A to C power moves, but we know he's a power rusher. So the likelihood is that it's at least B and probably even an A. Levi Reynolds looks incredible. If I have two guys we need to get, it's Levi Reynolds and that six foot four corner Nate Dillard. Nick Henry from Stanford also looks very good. Right, I think we know how we want to approach this. We're going to simulate to our pick at the end of the first round. One of those two players, if not both, will be available. There goes a corner right in front of us, Jalen Belton, who did end up looking pretty good. Probably not as good as the corner I wanted to draft. Could upgrade on the offensive line as well. So Henry's available. Reynolds is available. And Nate Dillard available. The three probable best players that we had a, would have a shot at are all available, which makes our decision extremely difficult. Do we want another big time speed receiver into the mix? Well, he looks like he can do other things. Be catching traffic, be catching, be release. Great athlete. He's gonna be really good. I'm gonna prioritize the receiver and then navigate the board for the rest. 95 speed, 96 acceleration, 91 agility. He just looked way too good. And receiver this year is a little bit tougher to draft because oftentimes you'll get a good receiver that might have D catching or C catching, D catching traffic. The C's and the D's at receiver this year are really not what you'd expect from other position groups because 70 catching is not like the worst thing. And especially if you're playing the games, it's more about speed and route running than catching and catching traffic. Those things are nice, but most of these receivers are just going to catch the ball anyway, unless you're Drake London in Falcons franchise. This quarterback continues to fall. Good overall accuracy. I'm not too interested, but uh, it, it is interesting that he's available here at the end of the first round. I think we have to trade up. I want Levi Reynolds and I want the corner 
Nate Dillard. Now, there are some tackles that we could consider, some interior offensive linemen as well. Nate Berger down the board is a great choice. And there are some other good tackles at right tackle as well down the board. We're probably going to just take a shot at one of them, but uh, not here. Devondre Campbell headed to the Bills alongside a second round pick this year, a seventh round pick this year, and a future five. We are getting number 30. So not a very high first round pick, but we'll at least be able to take either the corner or the defensive tackle, depending on who's available. And we'll see what the Vikings do one pick ahead of us. And they do take Levi Reynolds, who was the player we needed the least. Now, he did look really good. I definitely would have considered drafting him at this spot, but I think I would have leaned towards the corner, and that's just because of the current depth we have at defensive tackle. Kenny Clark, we could look to trade, but I want to hold on to. Lucas Van Ness, who moved down to 3-4 defensive end, and then we still have Devontae Wyatt. So while he would have been really nice, uh, I think I would have leaned toward the corner because we only have three corners that are currently even usable on the roster. Jair, uh, Jair Alexander, obviously, is CB1. Eric Stokes at CB2. And then Carrington Valentine at CB3. So we absolutely need corner. And Nate Dillard is available. Six foot four with great key ratings and elite speed and agility. He should be incredible. Only deep play rec, but the other ratings are so good that I don't think it's going to matter. Only normal development for him is bizarre the athletic ratings look great acceleration's not incredible but it's still quite good and his coverage is going to be good he's probably going to be a high 70 overall player and another corner has slipped to us Tremaine Gaddis also looks really really good definitely something I would consider I do really like the corner we just took though so if there's a better offensive lineman that's probably going to be the move could be a good spot for Nathan Berger, or we could wait. Tackle's not an overwhelming need unless we trade David Bakhtiari, who we probably should look to trade. Brennan Nicholson looks really good for a center. We could look to upgrade the interior as well. He looks really good. Okay, we need to... Uh, I don't even want to say play this smart. There's so many players that look good. We just have to get lucky enough to make the right decision. John Wheaton looks fantastic. It can't be a tackle here. The depth on the offensive line is just too good. Well, I guess it could be a tackle. We need linebacker. And there are some great linebackers available. How are we supposed to make this decision? Oh my goodness. Tyquan Jones looks awesome. This is a really, really tough choice. I'm going to go Tyquan Jones here. We need a linebacker to replace Devondre Campbell. We have an elite athlete with great overall skills, A block shed and tackle, B zone coverage and hit power. He should be great. And he's got hidden dev, 87 speed, 91 acceleration. Great overall athletic ratings. I'm probably gonna look to trade Preston Smith. If I can get a pick right around here, I'd be ecstatic. Do not want Preston Smith. We don't have the cap room. How does that work? Are we taking a penalty for something? Trading Preston Smith might erase that, though, because it's such a massive contract. Uh, but if you want to talk about massive contracts, David Bakhtiari's cap hit this year is $40 million. Significant. Oh, well, they finally got Marte Mapu's headshot in the game, and it's kind of background. Gray square. Oh, that's funny. Okay, it is a big-time trade. David Bakhtiari's on the move. Final year of his deal. We were not going to extend him. Uh, he's 32 years old. Still obviously quite good when healthy, but that's a big concern. We are trading a fourth round pick this year, a fourth next year, and a first in 2026 for two third round picks this year, a first next year, and a second next year from the Cardinals. So I wanted picks in this draft. We now have the top one in the third round. There are players that I just don't really want to miss out on. Now, it's okay to miss out on some of these players, right? Can't get everybody. But when you look at how good these offensive linemen have the potential to be, we need to come away with at least one. And I figure now is the time to replace David Bakhtiari. Just made sense to. Another great looking linebacker. We're just going to simulate to our next pick. And hopefully everyone we want is still available. So we'll have to make that tough decision and ultimately probably choose wrong. But that's just kind of the way that goes sometimes. I think the first one's going to be Brennan Nicholson. Just looks great. 
A impact block, B pass block. Great overall athlete. A pass block finesse, but A run block. He should be amazing. Like, he's not going to be much of a power guy, but that's okay. Should be great. 88 strength, though. 85 acceleration, hidden dev. And he's also big enough where we don't have to keep him at center. 6'4", 314. That's like... You could play guard. You could play tackle, even. Obviously, a lot of that would depend on real-life arm length. But not a thing in Madden. So we've got a lot of flexibility. There goes the other center. I think we got the better one, though. And now the decision has to be made whether or not we want to draft another offensive lineman. Now, it could be a tackle... I think a couple of these guards look good. John Wheaton was one. Tyrone Saunders looks like another. Not as good of an athlete, but the skills look pretty good. Good right tackles are off the board, which means I think we take a shot at a good left tackle. And Nathan Berger just looks good. Really, really solid athlete. Everything except run block power looks great. Another finesse style offensive lineman. We're going to draft him. Also hidden dev. 89 strength, 81 acceleration, 69 speed. Nice. He looks great. We're building an agile offensive line, but if these guys can get out and move, you know, that's going to make things easier for the rest of our team. And we'll simulate now to the end of the third round. So our offensive line has ultimately been revamped. And now we can just take the best player available at the back of the third round. And I'd, I'd probably look for a linebacker if one of those guys is still available. I think the good outside linebacker that I would have considered is not on the board anymore. So we might have to pivot. Probably not going to draft. Oh, inter interesting. I thought he was not a pass rusher. I don't know why I thought that. It says power rusher. We are making a trade. Preston Smith back to the commanders. A third round pick, which is my pick right now. A fourth in 2026 and a fifth in 2025 gets us a 2026 round one pick. Don't want Preston Smith trading my picks away to get it. And uh, I couldn't be happier with that trade. Ooh, not a bad pick. Ron Oldham. Ron Oldham from Ohio State. 91 speed, 91 acceleration, 90 agility. All phenomenal for a safety. It's only 5'9", 206. Probably built better for the slot. Only D-tackle. His man coverage, I expect to be pretty good with that hybrid archetype. But uh, not a bad addition to our secondary. And that'll be the draft. Ooh. This is very interesting. So Nick Henry is a 76 overall. Very good. Very good for a rookie. Nate Dillard's only a 75. I misread him a little bit for sure. What's bringing him down? Tackle's awful for sure. Block shit's really bad. Awareness and play rec aren't especially high, but not awful. And the coverage is good. A little bit weird with him. All right. But I never expected Taekwon Jones to be close to a 78. Usually when you take one of these like run stopper outside linebackers, just off ball outside linebackers, 74, maybe 75 if they're really good. He's a 78. Block shedding's crazy high. Tackle's crazy high at 87. And he's got all these traits. Can he rush the passer even? Not really. I mean, he's already the number 13 ranked left outside linebacker in the entire league. Absurd. Nicholson's a 74, as is Berger. Oldham's only a 66. And Shamir Yancey is a 69 overall elusive back. There was a running back I was going to draft. Yancey's actually not too bad looking. His name was like Percy something. He was a power back that I liked the look of, but it was either take him in the, in the uh, third round or not at all because I didn't have a pick in the fourth. Yeah, Percy Saxton from Bethune-Cookman. Does have hidden dev, 5'10", 231. 91 speed, 91 acceleration. Really well-rounded, 82 trucking, 82 stiff arm. Like that would have been a really nice backup running back, especially a short yardage power back replacement for A.J. Dillon. And he's got superstar dev as well. Why do I even check? It only, it's only pain. That's the only thing that can come of that. It's only pain. But we got the number one player in the draft in Taekwon Jones. There's a receiver, Zaire Hayward, who is also a 78. Yeah, just 87 spectacular catch, really boosting his overall. That's crazy that Taekwon Jones is the number one player in the class. Gaddis ends up being a 77. 
Overall, I think we did pretty well. Levi Reynolds ends up being a 75 overall with Hidden Dev. 81 power moves. Yeah, he looks like a beast. This is another one where I don't really get why he's only a 75 overall. He just looks way too good to be that low. And it's not like that's terrible, only star dev. But you'd think maybe like 77, 78. Nick Henry has the burners, by the way. He's just cooking Jair Alexander. At least did on the first rep. I know it seems like why did I take him when I have Dobbs and Watson and Reed. But I think Henry has potential to be the highest overall of the bunch. He's the youngest. He's a comparable overall. And probably somebody that we should try to get on the field as soon as possible. Now, I'm not sure about his dev trade, obviously. We're going to figure that out probably somewhere around the midseason mark if he gets enough reps. But I think the potential is absolutely there. And even if it's just star, he's still only 21 years old. He's probably going to be close to an 80 overall by the end of the first season. So I feel pretty good about drafting him. So this will be the team. I like it. Got to develop these rookies a little bit. But defensively, we look good. I've moved Jones to inside linebacker, so JJ Enigbare is going to play right outside linebacker. However, uh, in our 3-4, he's actually not going to be a rush end because we're going to have that as Lucas Van Ness with Clark and Wyatt up the middle. Gary, of course, off the edge as well. But it should be a pretty good team. Got to develop a lot of these guys. It's going to be all about development at this point. But uh, I, I think the framework, the structure of the team is kind of in place. And based on how good we were last season, I'm expecting more of the same. I don't need any type of, you know, Super Bowl slump season. I know we didn't win the Super Bowl, obviously, but, you know, we were so much better than expectations. I don't think we're going to regress too much, maybe. Seems like it's going to be a big-time outside linebacker class, which is convenient because that's exactly what we need, is a rush linebacker. So I would say that all of these guys are going to be rush linebackers, so... I want my tier three scout to be defensive end and outside linebacker, and then we're going to be good to go. Okay, midseason mark. We are, we were one and one when I did the simulation to the midseason mark, and it's taking much longer than I would have wanted here. Four and three, so a little bit worse than we were last year. However, we are still tied for the division lead in the NFC North. We're going to have player upgrades. We're going to have national focus scouting at this point. And we should have some dev trait reveals for our rookies. Obviously, it's going to be a lot of star. If we get one superstar or better, I would be absolutely thrilled starting with the offensive line. Not revealed yet. Henry only has star dev. That's a little bit disappointing, to be honest. How do we not have our, our tackle and center revealed? It's got to be so close. About a game away. So we'll know next week at least. And I will go week by week to get to week 11 where I can do the uh, three focus scouting players. And then defensively, this is what I'm talking about. Tyquan Jones, what a steal. Superstar dev. We know he's a great athlete. Just got to keep developing him. That is a monster steal wherever we drafted him. I think that was a third round pick. Might have been a second round pick. It might have been a second round pick for us. Uh, but either way, just great. And we've got some momentum now. Geno Stone solidifying our secondary, but we could use an upgrade at the other safety spot. And I would like to get some really high picks in this draft because it seems loaded at the top. So we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. I'm obviously not going to, you know, sell the farm to buy a pig, if you know what I mean. But... We're going to try to put ourselves in a really good position to be successful. We have eight players who need to be renewed. We have a ton of money to do so. Kenny Clark going to be coming back. Aaron Jones I'd like back maybe for two years. Jordan Love. Oh my goodness, some big time free agent decisions. We're going to pick up the fifth year options on Wyatt and Walker. And I think we have to extend Jordan Love. He's not actually terribly expensive. I'd be more comfortable with a three-year deal. And Jordan Love is back for the next three seasons. Doesn't mean we can't draft a quarterback if we get in a good position to do so, but I'm not going to go out of my way to make it happen. And yeah, two-year deal for Aaron Jones. He re-signs as well. Kenny Clark, I'd be more comfortable with on a three-year deal as well as opposed to two. He re-signs as well. This is great. Everyone actually wants to be here which is such a nice change from some of these rebuilds. And Josh Myers is just such awesome depth. 
and he could potentially start at right guard after John Runyon Jr. is gone, which I know we just extended him, but it's not super long-term to where we can't get out of that or can't replace him. So we're in a good spot right now. Just got to keep it up, keep developing these guys that I talk about, and uh, we'll see if we can't kind of establish ourselves as the best team in what is a very competitive NFC North right now. And we get a 7-3 to win over the Lions. <laughs> nice, dude. We're dominating right now. And Lucas Van Ness is on the verge of a breakout. But Lucas Van Ness did not take advantage of the opportunity. And we lost 31-19 to a team where I think we have their number one overall pick. Or, or first pick, I should say. As the top five outside linebacker, number one overall player in the class is actually a round one to two talent. Same for Andrew Hines. I am now incredibly disappointed with these outside linebackers. They're not nearly as good as I was hoping for. Not nearly. Also, when upgrading Nathan Berger, I just noticed it as I backed out. He has superstar development. So a big time pickup on the offensive line. Superstar dev is huge. Uh, Nicholson has just star. So that's already pretty amazing to get a superstar dev um, offensive lineman. Oldham, we don't know yet, but probably doesn't really matter. And we don't win the division, but we do end up sneaking into the playoffs. Kind of, you know, that Super Bowl slump that I talked about that, you know, it wasn't our Super Bowl season. Anyway, uh, Jordan Love was not great. Threw a lot more interceptions this year, 22 to be exact. Only 26 touchdowns, only 3,100 yards passing. Aaron Jones took a big step back. Didn't really have any receiver go off because our passing game was pretty much non-existent. And then Quay Walker led our team in tackles. Taekwon Jones, not too far behind him, also had 18 TFLs. 10 sacks for Gary on the season. Not a ton of pressure from anywhere else, but six picks from Jair Alexander. So, you know what? Jair's a beast, we know that. Would like to see some other guys step up, but our offense was absolutely abysmal this year. And we might need to at least consider the possibility of changing uh, our defense around as well. We are knocked out of the playoffs instantly and headed to the offseason. Although, Nick Henry now has ability slots. He won Offensive Rookie of the Year, so he ends up being a pretty nice draft pick for us already. We'll upgrade Playmaker, I guess. That boosts him to an 80 overall. Should get another ability slot on top of that. And he does. Eagles beat the Ravens in the Super Bowl. Jalen Hurts wins Super Bowl MVP. And the league MVP goes to the other guy on that side of the field. Lamar Jackson also wins Offensive Player of the Year. Other side of the field, I should say, um, in that Super Bowl game. Whatever. Nick Henry wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Corner for the Lions, Joey Forney wins Defensive Rookie of the Year within our very own division. And we are headed to the offseason. So uh, we just need to make some changes. Jordan Love was terrible. We need to either put better players around him or find somebody else. Nick Chubb is a very interesting free agent. Would obviously be incredibly expensive. Greg Newsom also wouldn't be a bad choice either. He wants a franchise quarterback that we just don't have right now. Okay, so I know that we have Aaron Jones, right? Signed him to an extension. We should have just known that Nick Chubb was going to be a free agent and just given him a deal. Where do we stack up if we wanted to go after Nick Chubb? Somewhere in the middle. We have the money for a three-year deal. I also, like, always would like to sign Greg Newsom. Don't think it makes sense this time around, though. Nobody's going after Amari Cooper. I'll offer him. Kind of seems like a no-brainer to at least throw an offer out there uh, and see what we can do here. So... We will offer him, and we will get him. Amari Cooper signs with the Green Bay Packers. Nice ad for us. And Nick Chubb heads to the Rams. Georgia running back to the Rams. Seems familiar with Todd Gurley. But I really only wanted Amari Cooper. Now, why would I want Amari Cooper when we have Jaden Reed and Romeo Dobbs and the receiver we just drafted and Christian Watson? Well, he's better than all of them. Plain and simple, that's it right? It's a big time addition to our offense. We have Reed Watson, Henry, who is superstar dev now. Uh, we have good depth at receiver, obviously, but those dev traits are going to help out significantly. We needed a big time receiver one for Jordan Love, and that's exactly what we went out and did. Kenny Clark also up to superstar X-Factor. 
It's a nice boost. I think I glanced and saw the corner we drafted is also up a dev trait to star. So that's also nice. Normal dev just... It, it always looks ugly. It's never like the, the worst thing in the world. It's not the end-all be-all. But it, it certainly... It's like you don't get that dopamine hit when you draft a normal dev player. And it's not that, oh, it's a dopamine hit every time you draft a hidden dev player. But it's... Normal dev is just such a buzzkill, you know? We actually even have trade offers for Christian Watson. I'm going to at least consider those. I know it seems like, oh, that's, you know, one of the most exciting players on the entire offense in real life, and now I'm going to be trading him potentially. I'm trying to make this team a winner, right? And if it's not working, you got to figure out a way to make it work. I am really disappointed with the pass rushers that are available. If we're going to take an outside linebacker, like an edge rusher, uh, it's probably going to end up being a defensive end. And that's not the worst thing. It's not a deal breaker. And if we were to go 4-3, which the personnel could definitely say that we could do that, and we wouldn't even need an edge rusher at that point, we could just look to take, you know, uh, an off-ball linebacker, which there does not appear to be a ton at right outside linebacker. Is Daniel Croft worth taking at number nine? I don't think so. And oftentimes you can find steals at outside linebacker the way we did last year. Not in this draft. I mean, maybe Zach Gray looks okay, but day three guy does have great speed. You know what? On day three, Zach Gray is actually probably someone I need to remember to draft. Okay, round one, pick nine. We pick again at number 20. What do we want to do here? Now, a round one to two talent is not the worst. We know that's probably going to be a 74-ish overall, which isn't terrible. It's just not amazing. So would we prefer someone that's a little bit higher overall? It's quite possible. Derek Hopkins from UCLA. Elite acceleration, good speed, elite change of direction is interesting. A finesse moves. Block shed is just so bad, which I guess maybe he would fit at outside linebacker. Deontay Hopkins, a little bit younger, a little bit better block shedding. Just not quite as fast. Now... The big difference is we we don't know he's a round one talent. We don't know that. And with, with the other and Derek Hopkins, we know he's a round one guy. And you're like, okay, well, the, the, you know, one guy clearly looks better to me, which is um, Deontay Hopkins, right? They're both Hopkins. Oh, my goodness. I, that's why I keep getting confused looking for uh, each name. They're both named Hopkins. They're both 6'4", about 255 with the same face. They're identical twin pass rushers. Which one do we want? The one that looks better is Deontay Hopkins, in my opinion. However, and they can't be identical twins because their age isn't the same. I need I need to relax, dude. I'm, I'm getting tripped up here. But, same family? I don't know. A finesse moves could be an 85 for Derek Hopkins and an 80 for Deontay Hopkins, which would be a big difference. I'm going to lean towards the younger player with higher block shed and slightly less fast, but elite acceleration. He's got hidden dev, 86 strength, 79 speed, 89 acceleration. Hopefully we made the right decision. Looked like a real toss up. Could have definitely traded, uh, you know, for a better player as well with that pick. But I think that's what I'm gonna do here. I think I'm gonna trade round one pick 20 for a really talented off-ball linebacker to give us flexibility to move to a 4-3 if I want to do that. Now, I'd obviously want a guy like Fred Warner at number one, but they can't make a trade, so I'll, I'll pivot to Roquan Smith, but they probably can't make a trade either. Nope. I'm trading a one and a two this year, plus a third in, 2012, uh, in 2027 for Bobby Okereke and a future first-round pick from the Giants. So first-rounder next year, and we get Bobby Okereke, which is a big, big addition. Gives us the flexibility to move to a 4-3 really, really easily. And he's also just a beast. He's been one of the only players worth watching for the Giants this year. Dexter Lawrence certainly at the top of that list. But, wow, Bobby Okereke has really stepped it up. And uh, is a player the Giants really should try to build around, which I think they're trying to do that. It's not working right now. Not really finding a ton of players to get excited about. I'm going to go Tavon Beckham here from Ole Miss. 
Speed rush interior defensive lineman with 90 strength really isn't so bad. But with Devontae Wyatt, don't really see a world where he gets on the field early. I prob I thought it was in the third round. Okay, I probably should have just traded out of that pick. I thought it was in the third round. I thought it was this pick. That's right, I had two second rounders. Well, we'll trade this one for a future third if someone wants to offer it. There's the Broncos. Draft recap, how'd we do? Well, we got a 75 overall in Deontay Hopkins, 74 in Tavon Beckham. And those were really just our top picks. Traded the other ones away. For the entire draft, the number one overall player was a running back, DJ Fields. I looked at Breston, uh, ended up not wanting another receiver, but not that great of a draft class is really what it comes down to. Just, uh... You know, some good but not great players. Deontay Hopkins was a 75. Derek Hopkins was a 75. A little bit faster. They're very comparable. Okay, team looks pretty good here. Move Bobby O'Karake to outside linebacker. I think that's going to be a better fit for us. But I like the squad. I think we're moving in the right direction. And hopefully this year... You know, we, we play up to my expectations. And I would say the changes were effective. We are 7-0 and with the number one offense and defense at the midseason mark. You literally cannot be better than what we're doing right now. So, I feel pretty good about it. Now, the receiver at the top of the board could end up being very good. Number one overall in the class, projected rank. Now, the only time I looked at him was in the preseason or week one where it's just all question marks, but he was like 6'4", 225. So he could be one of those generational type big time receivers. I'm going to make quarterback the focus position though, just because if there's a sick looking quarterback that's going to be able to go up and dev trade like I've wanted and expected for Jordan Love and it just hasn't happened, uh, I will consider making that move. Although... We're 7-0. Do I really want to replace Jordan Love? It's not at the top of my list, but having a good idea about those quarterbacks could be pretty helpful. And we are still undefeated a week later. Guys to resign or trade, it is the trade deadline. Christian Watson's in here. Darnell Savage, Romeo Dobbs, Zach Tom. Tom, we definitely want to bring back. No question about it. He's our franchise left tackle at this point. Need to develop him a bit further. Now, we're running a little bit low on money, though, is kind of the problem. 16 mil. One of these guys has to get traded right now. And even a guy like Aaron Jones, man, probably just not a good decision to re-sign him. Two years remaining left on a 30-year-old running backs deal. He's an 86 overall, so we, we can't move on from him right now. We need him to be effective, but he's just not as good as we need him to be. One of these receivers has to go, if not multiple. Oh, it's week nine. Trade deadline is passed. Okay, never mind. That's right. Okay, my bad. We're just going to keep everybody and hope we can use them to win. We're still undefeated, obviously. Can't lose in the bye week. But, phew. It's just, it, it's, it's going to be an interesting offseason. I'll say that. And our first loss of the season comes in a Jordan Love breakout challenge. 31-21, we lose to the Lions. Uh, pretty devastating, to be honest. That was our opportunity to get Jordan Love an upgrade, and he just didn't rise to the occasion. Meanwhile, the Vikings slipped to 0-10, struggling heavily. And a Week 18 loss gives us our third loss of the season, but we finished with the number two offense and number three defense, and we were especially good through the air. Jordan Love didn't have the touchdowns, but did lead the league in passing yards, all but guaranteeing a dev trade upgrade, 32 touchdowns to nine picks. Rushing, Aaron Jones had 22 scores. That's where all those touchdowns went. And a really good number of yards as well, although I might consider drafting a running back. Jaden Reed with a big breakout year, 1,200 yards receiving or two yards shy, 11 TDs. Nick Henry goes over 1,000. Luke Musgrave, almost 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns. Amari Cooper was awesome. I signed him to be wide receiver one, and he was wide receiver four, or receiver four, but was still very solid. And defensively, Guys did their job. We put pressure on the QB. Lucas Van Ness with a big-time season. 
We were just playing great this year and you can see why we were ranked so high and why we won so many games. The 90 overall Eagles went nine and eight and are playing us in the divisional. I don't like the way this looks and we're eliminated again. We're eliminated for the second straight year in our first playoff game. Just destined to fail, I guess. Ravens end up winning the Super Bowl 38-28 over the Eagles. Nice little revenge for them there. And didn't really have anybody in the awards category for us. Jordan Love had a great season. I think he is going to be a star dev player at this point. I'd be surprised if he wasn't. If he leads the league in passing yards and doesn't go up to star dev, that would be incredible and not in a good way. But he does go up. Luke Musgrave up to star dev. Jaden Reed up to superstar dev. And then defensively, any changes? Geno Stone up to superstar. Other than that, it looks about the same. Okay. Eric Stokes back for three years. Yes. Have a little bit more money now that, um, you know, these contracts are rolled over into the new league year. I think I would just prefer to keep Romeo Dobbs to Christian Watson for right now. Watson is less interested in coming back. He's a year older, is a couple overall points higher, but I think I'm going to go ahead and try to sign Romeo Dobbs. And that's exactly what we do. Watson's going to have to walk. Same thing with Darnell Savage. We have 22 million to go out and upgrade the team. It's probably going to be one good player. Aaron Jones down to an 84, playing up with morale right now, but down to an 84. And then defensively, we need a safety really badly. Could do with another corner. I like the D-line edge, certainly not a need at all. Did we extend Quay Walker? I think we just picked up his fifth year option was all. Is that right? Yeah, so we're going to have to extend him next year. I'm going to keep him at middle linebacker to keep it cheaper. And then probably once we sign him, move him to outside linebacker. And then Okereke or uh, Taekwon is going to move into inside linebacker so we can pay them cheaper with these outside linebacker contracts. And here is what is available. Jalen Ramsey. Be quite an addition to our secondary. Justin Matabuke is here. That'd be a big upgrade on the interior of our defensive line. We can probably only afford one of those guys. I'm going to offer Matabike, and we're going to look to move him to defensive tackle, which is what he plays, just not with the Ravens. He's 3-4 defensive end, but he is now a Green Bay Packer. Is a great fit at 3-4 defensive end. He's been one of the better interior defensive linemen in the league this year. Isn't really getting enough credit for it, but is now a big-time addition to our defense. I like Devontae Wyatt. Matabike is just better. And you can see Matabike already goes up to an 89 overall at defensive tackle, and he's playing up to a 91. Our interior is phenomenal. I love our edge rushers. I love our linebackers. We need another defensive back. So we pick at number eight. I am eyeing the defensive back position overall, and that could potentially be corner as Kyle Lindley looks amazing. Now, I was thinking about drafting one of these guys to play safety, but he looks like he can just do anything. He looks like he could be a lockdown CB1. And you know what's funny is I talked about not moving up for a corner in this video. And now that's kind of what I'm thinking about doing. There are a couple of CBs down the board that look like they're just definitely safeties with awful man coverage, but very good zone coverage and especially good strength for Max Bell. I think we can still draft those guys, but moving up for what just looks to be an amazing corner overall is probably a good call. Although Justin McCain said, hey, Roger Goodell, not doing your damn combine. He said, hey, NFL teams, scouts, I'm not doing the damn pro day. I like the heart. Skips it entirely and could be also a safety for us. The receiver, Tavares Smith, goes at number one overall. Now, the Vikings have taken a receiver out of Tennessee before in the first round in the not-so-distant uh, past. Yeah. You guys can let me know who that is in the comments section below if you can remember. Most don't think of him as a pure receiver. That's all I'll say. I know most people are going to remember. Uh, maybe not most, but you guys can look it up. Or I'll tell you in probably like five seconds. I was going to try to make this trade go. I'll give you a second to think about it. I want to trade number eight and something to get number two. And maybe a future second round pick can get it done. I would also consider trading a player... Maybe Eric Stokes, 
just re-signed him. Jair has a contract coming up. The answer, by the way, is pause or mute if you don't want to hear the answer. You're thinking about it. Cordero Patterson. Kind of a fun one. Got to re-sign Quay Walker. All right, I am moving a lot. Devontae Wyatt, a first this year, number eight. A 2028 round one. A third this year. And a fourth in 2027. Just to move up six spots and not for a quarterback. I'm doing what I said you shouldn't really even do or you don't have to do most of the time. And that's moving up for a corner. But Kyle Lindley with the A man, A zone, A catching. Fine enough athleticism. Just looks too good of a player to pass on. And welcome to the Packers. He's a little slow. Not amazingly slow, but a little slow, but average speed. Could potentially play safety for us. Or just might be good enough to stick at corner, which is kind of what I'm thinking. Okay, back end of the first round now. If one of these zone-style corners are still available, they are probably the pick. And they are both still available. Now, I didn't look at Chad Gray, who also looks good. Also good speed. He's zone-style, B-tackle. It's going to be a tough call. I don't really think we can go wrong. I'm going to pass on Ben McCullers, who definitely looks really good. Only 20 years old as well. With great speed. He's just like a true corner, though. We can move the safety. We Or the corner, we just drafted a safety. Now, I have a tough call. I'm going to go Max Bell to play safety. That's the goal. He's got hidden dev, 91 speed, 92 acceleration. He is 23 years old. I don't know if that was the right decision. I just like that he had elite strength at corner. It felt like an easier move to safety with A zone coverage, A to B hit power. He just felt like a safety. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. I don't know. It, it was definitely a tough call. It could have gone either way. There were like three or four corners there that we actually could have drafted and felt pretty good about. I just did not know which direction to take it. In the second round, we're going to go with a running back. He's got A trucking, A carrying. Seems like a good back. And he's got hidden dev, 91 speed, 89 acceleration, 88 agility for a power back is incredibly high. Did we find a steal? It's possible. And the Bills will give us a second round pick next year for trading out of the third round. I'm in. Hopefully the Bills suck. All right, how do we do? Not too bad, I don't think. Kyle Lindley is a 79 overall, which is obviously extremely good for a corner. Only got 34 injury. Oh my goodness, that might be the lowest injury rating I've seen of any player in Madden 24. 34? That is uh, insane. I think we keep him a corner. Now, Max Bell is only a 74 overall. Cannot play man coverage. Great zone at an 80. Tackle's not terrible. Hit power is not terrible. He's going to move back to safety, which was the plan all along. And he does jump up to a 75. Isaiah Mitchell's a 73, not awful, but I don't really know if he's going to end up being a starter for ours. Probably not. Really good receiver goes at number one. We got the number two player at two, and then there was a significant drop off. McCain out of Wyoming ends up being a 77. He was somebody we thought about. Ends up being only normal dev, but better. Which do you prefer? Kind of a tough call. Ben McCullers and Chad Gray are both 76 overall players. McCullers also normal dev, but again, quite good and only 20. And what's different? A 23-year-old with hidden dev, let's say it's star, or a 20-year-old with normal dev. Like the 20-year-old's still going to get upgraded at a crazy rate because he's so young. Chad Gray, also normal dev. So we, we made the right call in terms of getting the dev trait. But did we take the best player? Not sure. I'll tell you what, though. Year one to get the best player on the field. I'm going to put the corner that we drafted number two overall back to free safety. Move Max Bell back to corner, even though long term, I think he's going to play safety. I just I prefer the 79 and now 80 overall free safety Kyle Lindley to to be in that spot. Now, I'm a little bit afraid that it's star dev because he's an 80 and we don't have an ability slot. Or actually, we wouldn't have that. We'd have... Hmm. We'd have ability when we upgrade him. It would say plus ability slot, but not show it. I'm going to move him back to corner so I can cheese it and learn his dev trait when we use him in the drill. That's smart. All right, here we go for Kyle Lindley. Does he get the ability slot? Upgraded zone because he's going to move back to safety. 
does not get an ability slot, which means he's not going to be superstar or above, unfortunately. Just going to be star dev unless it somehow screwed up because he was an 80 overall before. I would expect star dev for Lindley. I am going to start him at free safety because he's just better there for right now. And then uh, we'll have four good corners, great defensive line, and linebackers. And then offensively, just continue to get better and better and better, except running backs a little bit weird. Isaiah Mitchell is already up to a 75 overall and got an ability slot. So Mitchell has, at the very minimum, superstar development. Interesting. Not a whole lot has changed. I just feel like these players are getting better and better and better. Just from a quick, from the eye test, right? The defense looks like the best part of this team, but the offense continues to perform well. We just have to put it together in the playoffs. That's it. I think we're going to make the playoffs. I feel good about it. We continue to make the playoffs. We just have not found any success actually in the playoffs. Although we're only three and three at the midseason mark. What's our big problem right now? Our offense. Defense continues to play well. Offense is taking a step back. We have the worst rushing attack in the league. I think that has something to do with an aging running back. We need the position. I know we have a guy waiting to step up in what should be a great, great player. It's just going to take him too long to develop right now. We need to trade Aaron Jones. And I'd, I'd give up a lot for a really good running back. Aaron Jones, a first this year and in 2029 and a second this year. We still have another. Gets us Bijan Robinson, 96 overall, under contract for the next couple of years. Superstar development and obviously a big time upgrade at the position. It's a 96 overall versus an 84. And now I'm going to think that we're going to be able to run the ball. I'm thinking we're going to be able to do that. Jair Alexander is back on a three-year extension. Time to re-sign Geno Stone, and I think that I will. He wants a bit more money, but I think it's going to end up being a three-year deal. Jaden Reed, I'd also like to bring back. I would do a four-year deal, and he returns. Quay Walker going to sign an extension and then go play outside linebacker when it comes time to re-sign somebody else. Amari Cooper. Well, I, we need Luke Musgrave. Amari Cooper is going to be an interesting call. I'm thinking we should trade him. Musgrave wants more money. Elton Jenkins has to return. We are going to have to trade Amari Cooper for sure. Just has to be done. Elton Jenkins also wants more money. We're going to downgrade slightly with Amari Cooper to Zeke Porter. However, he's younger with Superstar Dev Trade as well. So, ooh, we actually don't have the money to be able to do that. Well, not us, but the Jets more than likely. Yeah, they're going to be negative 1.05. And with order, negative 80. We can make something work, though. I'd probably prefer Garrett Wilson if they want to do that. We can make something work, I think. It is Amari Cooper, John Runyon Jr., and three second-round picks to get us Garrett Wilson. But it's a big-time upgrade as Wilson's under contract for the next three seasons. He's about equally as expensive, but we don't have to work to re-sign him. He's younger. He's going to get better. It's a big time addition and an upgrade on Amari Cooper. And we end up having a great second half of the season with some big upgrades in Bijan Robinson, Garrett Wilson, of course. We started just three and three. But in the second half of the season, we lost just one game at the Bears. So huge second half, a ton of momentum going into these playoffs. This needs to be a big season for us. And by that, I mean, we need to win in the playoffs. Jordan Love leads the league in passing yards again. Another great season. 33 touchdowns to 9 picks. Looks nearly identical to what he's put up before. As Bijan goes for 27 touchdowns. Entering record-tying territory. I think the, the record's 28. Pretty sure in a season for rushing touchdowns. Over 1,500 yards rushing. Three 1,000-yard receivers, including 14 TDs for Jaden Reed. And then defensively, so many tackles for loss. 23 for Kenny Clark. He also had nine sacks. Gary went double digits. Van Ness was so close. Matabike had seven. And then Jair Alexander, five picks. Dillard with three. Kyle Lindley playing free safety. That's right, he had two. First round by, we end up playing the Giants in the divisional. And historically, the Giants really have the number of the Packers in the playoffs. 
They went through the Packers in Green Bay multiple times to go on and win Super Bowls. However, the Giants did lose to the Packers in the 2016 wild card. Might have been the divisional, actually. Either way, that was the only other time the Giants have made the playoffs in the last decade, with the exception of last year against the Vikings. It's been devastating as a fan. But here we go. Big time advantage overall wise, 91 versus 84. We've made a trade with the Giants in the past. That's why we have Bobby Okereke. We'll see if he plays well in his revenge game. All right, let's get a win here. Up 7-0 early, Giants answer and tie it. We'll take the lead back on another possession and extend it and extend it some more. It's 24-7, 31-7 into the second half. I don't think the Giants are going to be able to do enough to get back in this game. Your final score will be 38-13 Packers. Big time win. Giants made it close early, but we extended it throughout 352 and four touchdowns for Jordan Love. Giants new quarterback Adrian Parsons had a Tommy DeVito or Daniel Jones level game. Conference championship, Packers, Niners. This is as close as it's going to get. Talanoa Hufunga is up to superstar X Factor. Do have home field advantage, and we need to take advantage of playing here at home and get a big win. And here we go. Niners on the board first. We take the lead with a touchdown immediately following, though, and another. It's 14 to three. Our defense needs to continue to play well, and I like what the offense is doing. It's 24 to 13 now as we enter the fourth quarter, 31-13. I'm not sure the Niners are gonna have enough time. Even if they score a bunch of quick touchdowns, it's not gonna be enough. 36-20 is your final. And we are headed back to the Super Bowl with Jordan Love this time as he looks to be the third, fourth Packer quarterback, excuse me, to win the Super Bowl. Bart Starr, Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, and now Jordan Love. And it's going to be the Packers and the Texans in the Super Bowl, the Amon Green Bowl. We got a bunch of big upgrades. I think I'm going to let the CPU take care of those. Got a fantastic team. This is our moment. We've made it here. I mean, the Texans are up to a 90 overall. Okay, I thought they'd be closer to like an 84. They're at a 90. Jordan Love up to Superstar Dev. Bijan up to Superstar X Factor. Luke Musgrave up to Superstar. And then defensively, Okereke up to X Factor. This is big time stuff. Still don't know Bell's Dev trait. I'd guess star, but can't be certain. Mitchell, of course, is superstar. We already pretty much knew that. Would have been so, so rare for him to get superstar X Factor, but here we go. Packers, Texans. They've got Josh Allen. They've got Mark Andrews. Okay. Texans aren't messing around. See if we can win the Super Bowl. And here we go. Up early, 7 0. Offense keeps their foot on the gas pedal, but the Texans finally get on the board. It's 17-7. Still very much a game as the Texans make it a one-score game. We make it a two-score game right after that. It's 23-10. Still just two possessions. Need to extend it, and we do 29-10. And now 36-10. I, I even saw Ron Oldham get involved. A minute left to go in this game. Texans only with one turnover, but down by 26. And they will need an absolute miracle to get back in this game. It was a C.J. Stroud interception. I think return to the house by Ron Oldham. And that was actually the, the fourth down play for him, and that's the game. So we're actually going to uh, end up winning the Super Bowl unless we allow 26 points in 50 seconds, and uh, they're not even going to call timeout. So, no, it is 100% guaranteed, no matter what, over. Might try to take a shot downfield just to see what we can do. And, uh, nope, Josh Allen gets a sack. Congratulations. You lost the Super Bowl. 36-10 is your final. The Packers are Super Bowl champs for the fifth time. Jordan Love gets it done. Quay Walker was involved as well. You know, a lot of these young players for the Packers getting it done. Eric Stokes. Of course, not naming like the, the obvious guys. Rashawn Gary, Jair Alexander. We brought in a couple players to make it happen. Bobby Okereke, Geno Stone, Garrett Wilson, obviously B. John Robinson. But we developed Luke Musgrave, developed Jaden Reed. Romeo Dobbs was at least on the team. But that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.